Coming up on Tech Tonight, the search for Virginia Tech's 16th president continues. We'll tell you more. And Barbara Walters snubs a well-known celebrity for being late to an interview. Find out the details next. <laughs> Tonight, I'm Sarah Klein. And I'm Carly Gillespie. Roanoke County Police Officers Austin and Jacobs were awarded the Life Saving Award on September 25th. Officer Austin received the award for rescuing a woman and her son caught in a rip current while he was on vacation in July. Officer Jacobs received her award for rescuing victims of an apartment fire. The two were recognized by Chief Howard Hall. Last Saturday, Radford City officials declared that it was an electrical fire that caused a Radford mobile home to burn to the ground. The fire happened in the Rustic Village mobile home park, and luckily, no other homes were damaged. The fire started just after 8 o'clock at night, and within 15 minutes, the Radford firefighters were able to put out the fire. Despite the complete loss of the mobile home, with expected damages to cost $6,500, fortunately, no one was injured. A man accused of murdering and raping a teenager has finally pleaded guilty in court on Monday. Shane Paget raped and beat Kara Holly with a tire iron and dumped her body in Franklin County in 2010. In May 2012, many media outlets were speculating that Paget could have been high on bath salts at the time. However, that was not brought up in court on Monday. Paget will be sentenced next year and it is possible he could face the death penalty. Pink is the new black for four Montgomery County law enforcement agencies. For the month of October, to show their support of breast cancer awareness, the Christiansburg, Blacksburg, Montgomery County, and Virginia Tech Police Departments will have one patrol vehicle with pink decals. Chief Mark Sisson of the Christiansburg Police first unveiled the pink decal car in October of 2012 after learning about the prevalence of breast cancer in his community. Sisson has kept his car in pink all year long, and other departments are considering doing the same due to the positive responses from the communities. The new cars were revealed on October 1st. sophomore students were chosen to be a part of the class of 2016 leadership team. The leadership team is one of the most prestigious and unique leadership opportunities that a student can aspire to achieve at Virginia Tech. Members of the team are responsible for the design of the class ring and organizing events such as ring premiere and ring dance. Virginia Tech is one of the few schools that redesigns their class ring each year. Positions on the team include marketing, class elections, webmaster, ring design committee, ring dance committee, and special events. Matthew Merritt was chosen as the ring design chair for the class of 2016. Grammy-winning singer-songwriter Jason Mraz will perform at Virginia Tech on Wednesday, October 16th. BTU presents a rare acoustic evening with Jason Mraz and special guest Raining Jane. His record-breaking hit, I'm Yours, spent 76 weeks on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and, Jason, and won Jason a Grammy for Song of the Year in 2010. Tickets are $25 for students, faculty, and staff and $45 for the general public. Tickets can be purchased in Squire Student Center or online at vtu.org. Since Virginia Tech's president, Charles Steger, announced this past May his plans to retire, the search for Virginia Tech's 16th president has been in full swing. Russell Reynolds Associates is serving as a con the consultant for Virginia Tech's presidential search. Their team of associates are assisting with all aspects of the process, including suggesting, referencing, and interviewing presidential candidates. The Virginia Tech Board of Visitors, appointed a 22-person committee to help the university find its 16th president in May. The Presidential Search Committee encourages the Virginia Tech community 
to give their input on credentials or qualities believed to be imported in Virginia Tech's next president. Stay tuned because Courtney Holroyd brings you this week's entertainment news next. Oh, what am I going to do? I need a break from all this work. I really want to find stuff about like sports around campus. What am I gonna do? There's no. I, what's going? Hey man, looks like you're having some trouble there. Dude, you need to get. You need to find BTTV, man. Channel BTTV. 33. What's that? Dude, it's the place where you can find all your entertainment, sports, news, and spe and special productions, man. Oh, oh sweet. That's that's, that's where you gotta go, man. Yeah. Welcome back, I'm Courtney Horroyd with your entertainment news. Sports Illustrated cover girl Kate Upton was recently spotted out and about showing off her new boyfriend. Fans were shocked and excited to see Upton holding hands in New York City with former Dancing with the Stars pro Maxim Shmerkovsky. A source confirmed to the People magazine that the two were very serious. The pair met through a mutual friend about six months ago, but the romance didn't heat up until an intimate birthday dinner in June when Maxim took Upton out to celebrate her 21st in the Big Apple. They just clicked, the source says. They have a lot of chemistry together. I think good-looking people are naturally attracted to good-looking people. All the best to the happy couple. World-famous journalist and television personality Barbara Walters has one rule when it comes to her interviews. Don't be late. Superstar Katy Perry learned that the hard way. She was running late to her tell-all interview with the journalist and didn't realize the wrath of Walters until it was too late. Perry says, quote, When I got there, I apologized immediately. But then she said to me, You know I've only ever waited for one other person this long, and you know who that person was? Judy Garland. You know how she turned out, right? Perry is now happily dating John Mayer, but at the time of the interview, her marriage was falling apart with Russell Brand. I just couldn't tell her as we were sitting down for a mega interview, hey, my marriage is falling apart, give me a break, Perry recalls. Leave her alone, Barbara. Zac Efron recently came clean about his problems with drug and alcohol abuse. The 25-year-old actor spoke out for the first time since his stint in rehab, attempting to put an end to his party boy lifestyle. On Friday, Efron uploaded an Instagram picture which showed him living life to the full atop Peruvian mountains, surrounded by the ruins of Machu Picchu. Hey guys, I just returned from an incredible trip to Peru with my dad and wanted to thank you all for your support these past few weeks. It means the world to me. Love you guys, Efron's caption said. All the respect in the world to Efron for trying to get his life back together. We're all rooting for you, Zach. Coming up next, Hannah Gray brings you your national headlines. And that, viewers, is how the Hokie crossed the river. Back to you, Steve. Thanks, Kip. Breaking news. BTTV is the only TV station with all your Hokie news. We have sports, Entertainment. And news. Tune in to VTTV on Channel 33. Television for students, by students. New details have been released about the man from Danville, Virginia who was stabbed on Monday. The 56-year-old man, now identified as Gilmore Martin Cowan, was stabbed by a man wearing a mask in his friend's car. Cowan's friend was not injured in the attack. The Danville Police Department are still looking for the killer. If you have any information, please call 434-793-0000. Three people are dead after a single vehicle car crash last Friday night in Floyd County. The accident happened between 1145 and midnight on the Christiansburg Turnpike, where the vehicle went off the road after rounding a corner and hitting two trees. Of the three individuals in the car, two were ejected from the SUV. Virginia State Police say none of the men inside were wearing their seat belts. Police are still investigating the accident and are currently looking into the possibility of alcohol being a factor. Oh, what am I gonna do? I need a break from all this work. I really wanna find stuff about like sports around campus. What am I gonna do? There's no. I, what's going? Hey man, looks like you're having some trouble there. Dude, you need to get. You need to find BTTV, man. Channel BTTV. 33. What's that? Dude, it's the place where you can find all your entertainment, sports, news, and spe and special productions, man. Oh, sweet. That's that's, that's where you gotta go, man. Yeah. And that, viewers, is how the Hokie crossed the river. Back to you, Steve. Thanks, Kip. Breaking news: BTTV is the only TV station with all your Hokie news. We have sports, entertainment,
and news. Tune in to VTTV on channel 33. Television for students, by students. Welcome back, I'm Erin Connors with your sports headlines. The Virginia Tech Hokies defeated the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets at Bobby Dodd Stadium on Thursday with a final score of 17 to 10. Quarterback Logan Thomas threw a touchdown pass and ran for a score to help secure the victory for the Hokies in their first ACC game of the season. True freshman Kendall Fuller also made an interception in the closing moments of the game to cap off a great defensive performance by the Hokies. With the win, Virginia Tech improves their record to 4-1 overall and 1-0 in the ACC. The Hokies return to Lane Stadium this Saturday for their homecoming matchup as they take on the University of North Carolina. Kickoff is at 1230. And continuing on with Hokie Sports News, the Virginia Tech men's soccer team came away with a 0-0 draw against the 16th ranked Clemson Tigers on Friday. Senior goalkeeper Kyle Renfro made a career high 10 saves over the course of the match to pave the way for his 12th career shutout game. The Hokies managed to rack up 11 shots during the game compared to Clemson's 22, but neither team was ever able to score. The matchup against the Tigers marked the third time this season that the Hokies have played a ranked opponent and brings Virginia Tech's record to 3-2-3 and and overall and 1-0-3 and and in the ACC. The Hokies will return to the field this Friday as they travel to North Carolina to take on Wake Forest. And moving on to the world of NFL football, the Washington Redskins secured their first win of the season on Sunday with a 24-14 victory over the Oakland Raiders. After trailing 14-0 at the end of the first quarter, the Redskins were able to overcome the Raiders after putting up a strong defensive performance. Recording a pick six by David Amerson in the first half and sacking Oakland quarterback Matt Flynn seven times over the course of the game. The win improves Washington's record to 1-3 overall and helps to redeem the struggling team from a historically bad start to the season. Their worst, in fact, since 2001. Washington now heads into a bye week for week five of the NFL season, so Redskins fans will have to wait another two weeks to see their team play. The Redskins will return to the field on Sunday, October 13th, as they take on their arch rivals, the Dallas Cowboys. Kickoff is at 8.30. And coming up next, Hannah Gray brings you your national headlines. of Baghdad on Monday morning killing at least 51 people and wounding dozens more. According to an officer, the deadliest of the day's bombings was in the eastern Sadar City District where a bomb inside a parked car exploded through a small vegetable market and its parking lot killing seven people and wounding 16. Following that explosion were a total of 10 bombs in parked cars that were unleashed in a quick sequence in the Shiite neighborhoods. Wreckage of intertwined cars and leftover remains of the car bombs littered the pavement as firefighters struggled to extinguish fires that broke out from the bombs. Chemical weapon experts head to Syria in secrecy on a private jet bound for one of the world's most dangerous places to destroy substances so deadly that the smallest particle could kill in just minutes. The inspectors for the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons undertook the task of helping Syria destroy its chemical weapons. They have about nine months to find and dismantle an approximated 1,000 ton chemical arsenal that took years to build. That's the shortest deadline they have ever faced in any nation in their first mission in a country at war. Inspectors can use any means they deem necessary to render equipment inoperable, including techniques that are crude but effective. Kenyan lawmakers are investigating alleged security failings that happened during the deadly assault of the Nairobi Westgate Mall by Islamist gunmen. Searches continue for 39 people still missing. 
since the bloodbath that lasted four days at the upmarket shopping mall was brought to an end last Tuesday by Kenyan forces, but left at least 67 people dead. The Red Cross said in a statement that the government agencies have been conducting forensic and criminal investigations. In addition, bomb experts continued with clearing the building to ensure safe access. So how about those police officers? That's so awesome, a life-saving award. I did not know that existed. And they did that when they were on vacation. They weren't even on duty. They did that out of the kindness of their own hearts. Mm -hmm. That's definitely very inspiring. And I know the um, woman I read, was, she arrived first on the scene along with, I think it was the paramedics before the fire people even did and she used her good call of judgment and ended up saving people so a good day for Roanoke County. It's amazing. That's it for Tech Tonight. I'm Sarah Klein. And I'm Carly Gillespie. And I'm Hannah Gray. Thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next week.